There's still midday live on your election command centre. Now, the Concerned Persons with Disabilities says PWDs will be disenfranchised during this year's election should the Electoral Commission go ahead with the compilation of a new register without their engagement. In the view of the group, protocols of social distancing as stipulated by the World Health Organization would obviously be flouted when persons with disabilities employ the services of assistive agents which they require for mobility, access and social functioning. Frederick Hassel is National Advocate Officer of the group. Since Electoral Commission have started this issue about compilation of new register, we've not heard anything concerning we persons with disability until yesterday that our press statement came out during their IPAC meeting. They came out with a communicate that we persons living with disability will be going to the district assemblies to register. And the question is, who foot those bills? Because someone will be joining car like two or three before going to the, re uh, the district office. All those provisions, where are they? We also heard from the General Secretary of MPP, Mr. John Boydou, also saying that no, they have to create a special queue for us. So that means still coming out with this June date, still there's not a provision made for we persons with disabilities because now the concerns are two. The Electoral Commission says district office. Um, someone also says we'll create a new queue for you people. We've seen that, sir, we are not considered. And in all this, looking at the hula baloo against this compilation, we'll do it, don't do it, we'll do it, don't do it. And if there's chaos in this country, we persons with disability, we are the losing end. If they are to compile this voters register, will be disenfranchised. Let's speak with a private legal practitioner and a lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology uh, School of Law, uh, Hans Kodia, joining us. Uh, Mr. Kodia, thanks very much. So uh, the national insurance card, for example, is one of the cards to be presented for registration. But some who registered are yet to get their cards. So I want to find out what do you think that re if registration starts today and people still don't have their cards, can they take on the NIA and demand to be registered? Well, thank you very much, sir. Um, concerning the issue that you just raised, I think the answer is, is no, completely no. Uh, I've gone through the NIA Act of 2006 at 707. Of course, it is a legal entity that can sue and be sued. It has a core mandate. And one of the mandates that we all know is to provide us with national identification card. The most unfortunate thing is that it is if you which has elected to use the card for the registration processes. So we all know the challenges that uh, and I is facing at the moment. Even at the point in time, somebody even had to move the court to grant an injunction to restrain it from performing its statutory duties because of the pandemic. So I do not think that anybody can go to court and say that I've registered with NIA, I have not got my card, mm. and compelled the institute to release my card to me. It is not possible because we are not giving any mandate to complete the process within a particular period. So that somebody could say that there has been a breach of that particular statutory mandate. It's a process. And now it's going to be in Ghana until the world ends because some people are going to register, the races are going to register. So if the electoral commission says, I need a card before I can register you to vote and your card is not ready with NIA, I do not think that anybody may have a course of action against NIA. 
I and do not think so. Sir. That's that's very interesting. So then this puts quite a number of people in a fix because then if they don't have their cards, then they will be disenfranchised. This squarely fits into sits into the arguments that have been made by those opposed to the compilation of the new voters register that thousands of Ghanaians could potentially be disenfranchised. Yes, that is possible, but the part of the matter is this. It is the EC which has formulated its requirements for purposes of registration. Mm. It is not the NIA issue, because the EC could do any other possible thing, possibly legally, you know, convenient to register people who are eligible. But EC has elected not to go by any of those things except the national ID card. So it is possible some people may be disenfranchised, but the issue of they not being permitted to vote is not coming from the NIE. It is coming from the EC, which has come out with those conditions which are not likely to be met by some of the mm. people within this particular time. If there's no other means that EC could adopt or use to register people, the blame, in my opinion, looking at the law or the legal regime, the legal fight, the blame should not be placed at the doorsteps of NIA. It should rather be blame on the EC, which probably, in my opinion, may have adopted a certain strategic you know, position which is making people difficult to, to register to vote. So, in short, the NIA cannot be sued in court for breaking any statute or all mandate for not releasing or registering people and giving them cards for purposes of registering with the Electoral Commission. Mm. So, so, that is my view. So, I want to also find out from you the legal implications of restricting the requirements to just two the passport, and the NIA card. There are many who have argued that uh, making such blanket restriction actually is going to deny a lot of people the ability to put their names on the uh, voters' roll because many people don't have passports. And the NIA has not completed its work. It's yet to wrap up with compilation in the Eastern region. Yes, that is perfectly so. Uh, somebody may come up with that argument but the fact of the matter is that, you know, EC also has a discretion as to how to register people for the process of voting. If EC comes out to say that, I would only register you if you can satisfy A, B, C, D requirements, and you are unable to meet the requirement, then technically it means that because of the non-compliance, you are being kicked out. But then again, somebody also can make a case here that the requirements formulated by EC are so difficult to comply within this particular time. So technically, EC is refusing to permit me to vote because of these requirements. I'm telling you that if this matter were to go to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court could provide some flexibility in the registration for purposes of uh, 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 registration. But then again, the Supreme Court may not necessarily interfere in the, in, the, in the duties of the EC because it has its own discretion as to what requirements it may require from the public before registering the person. Right. So technically you are, you are right. But right. still, we may not also blame the EC so much because EC will say that this is the way I want to go about it. Is it legal? Is it possible? Is it reasonable? If the answer is yes, then it means that we cannot blame the EC. But in my opinion, legally, if EC says, unless you have a card, I will not register you, where there are other possibilities, then I might think that that position of the EC may also be considered right. very harsh. Yes. 
Mr. Kodi, I are grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Hans Kodi is, a, you, is a private legal practitioner, right. and this is still midday live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. Now, our senior research fellow at the Institute for Democratic Governance, Ida Kwesi Jonah, has warned there could be problems if the Electoral Commission fails to comply with its intended plans in the compilation of the voters register scheduled for June and July. He spoke with TV3 after he sat in at the just ended. IPAC meeting as an observer. Registration is definitely coming on end of June to end of July. Is there a specific date? No, specific dates have not been announced. Altogether, it is going to take about 38 days. 30 days for actual registration, four days to move from one station to the other, and then three days for mopping up. So, Sir, what do you make of the decision of the EC to carry out with the compilation starting from end of June to the uh, beginning of June to the end of July? That's what you said. That is what they have decided. Personally, I think it is going to put a lot of pressure on the commission because there are so many other things mm. to is do. Is it a good idea? It, well, it is good for the EC. It's a good idea so long as they. But as IDEC, is it a good idea? No, I. Looking at previous registrations, 2012, we finished registration May 4th. Do you think this could create problems for the EC, looking at the it, dates? It, it is going to put a lot of pressure, definitely going to put a lot of pressure on them. But I think they, uh, once they have decided to do it, they will also prime themselves up to meet the challenge. But you think it will indeed create problems? It, it will create a lot of, it put a lot of pressure on them, yes, to mm. finish things, try and finish things on time. Mm. Any advice for the EC? Well, <laughs> the... The only advice I can give is that um, when in politics you talk to even those who are opposed to you and so they should continue to be in constant dialogue mm. with people who are opposed to their idea. Yeah. There's, there's still time, end of June, end of July, there's still time to talk. Right now, the National Democratic Congress, NDC, says it will resist all efforts by the Electoral Commission in compiling a new voters register. The party's director of elections, Elvis Ifri Ankara, speaking to TV3, said the party is still against the compilation of the new voters register. The point we are making is that registration, elections, preparing for elections is not voodoo. It's science, okay? So you can do your projections based on the EC's own lack of preparedness. Where as we are speaking now, they are saying end of June. Which part of the end of June, nobody knows. So end of July, which part of end of July, nobody knows. They don't have a clear roadmap. That's number one. Number two, as we speak, the equipment has not arrived. That's why they said they are now going to do a uh, piloting. When? Again, no dates because they don't have the equipment. Three. You're going to do this in a COVID era, trying to register 17, 18 million people. Four, the NIA, well, they said they would do a mop-up. That, if you had three years, you couldn't distribute 6 million cards. How can you distribute 6 million cards in a month? So, if you put all these things together, and the fact that we're getting into a rainy season with all this misunderstanding, I'm saying that if the EC attempts, they'll hit a roadblock. This is just the beginning. We will resist it. We will ensure that the right thing is done. We have to preserve this democracy. This kind of kangaroo type of behavior where you want to bulldoze your way through and disadvantage people, it will not work. Yeah, it's not going to happen. The constitution says that if you have to exercise discretion, don't exercise it in an arbitrary manner. Don't exercise in a capricious manner. Don't exercise in a whimsical manner. Mm. They are behaving in a capricious, whimsical and arbitrary manner. It was not a consultative meeting. They just went to go and say whatever they had already decided they were going to do. Mm. So it wasn't consultative. But more importantly, when they gave us the notice, the first notice that came, the date was 2010. So we drew the attention to it, that the date you sent was 2010. Then they sent the second notice. And you know the time they gave us? 10 p.m. That should tell you the state of the EC today. That common letters. You send the first one, you brought it was 2010. 
we drew your attention to it so any professional will you not take your time to check the second one the second one to the time was 10 pm it tells you that the ec is under tremendous pressure that's why they will make these basic fundamental mistakes that the first grade clerical officer will not make That's Elvis Afriankra. Let's quickly get to the uh, studio and speak with the vi first vice chair of the CPP, William Dorkbo, uh, who joins us now. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. So this whole IPAC and uh, the resistance against the compilation of the new voters register has reached a new dimension because the Electoral Commission has announced clear plans now. It doesn't look like it's stepping back. CPP, what's your position? Okay. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, Actually, I'm the first vice chairman of the Progressive, Progressive People's, People's Party. Party. I beg your pardon, yeah. Uh, mm. PPP. Mm. So now your question again. So your position? Well, our position has been consistent since 2012 mm. that it will be prudent, it will be efficient, it will be effective to use the national ID card as the instrument for voting. When you use the national ID card, there's no argument. That card tells upfront who you are, your age, your nationality, and everything else. And, and whether no, you qualify to whether vote you qualify or not. to vote or not, all right, can be confirmed with that card. So what has brought us here? What has brought us here? This country is started to be the beacon of democracy on the continent of Africa. And we have run this for 28 years. We had several elections resulting in regime changes. And we are in 2012, uh, 2020, and we are haggling over the registration system. My brother, isn't this a shame? It is, absolutely. Why, 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 why are we spending so much energy and heat that we should apply so, but, to governors. My view is that under the circumstance of uh, seeking to use the national identification card as the source document for elections in this country, where, of course, all citizens, residents and non-residents, non-citizens, will all be captured in that uh, NIA database for which we can easily extrapolate those of citizens. Do you not think that it's too early in, 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 in the scheme of things because the National Identification Authority has not completed the compilation of the names of citizens and residents? Well, but who is to blame? Who's to blame? Who's governed this country since 2008, 2012, 2016, 2020? Now look, these guys are shortchanging us, all of us, the rest of us. They know the games they are playing and they are pushing us to the wall. It's time we, 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 we told them in the face mm. that you are wrong, you got it wrong. This NIA system needed to be fixed long ago. Long Remember, ago. we started mm -hmm. this in 2006. Yeah, with Professor if, Dumont. And if you are minded to have a credible system of voting, biometric, why are you wasting our time and energy and all manner of things? Listen, we have a nation to build. Mm -hmm. All right? You saw the way COVID has you know, exposed yeah. us. So many vulnerable people who have thrown caution to the wind so that they may get, you know, a little um, um, you know, packet of rice. They're so poor. All right? This is the time for us to be thinking, reworking. About, about the fundamental issues affecting us rather than focusing uh, uh, solely on elections. This is, this is, this is absolutely so I, I unnecessary. Get sense, I get the sense that a PPP government will scrap the use of a voter's register and resort to the oh, national identification card. Please, please. That is, that, is, that is the most effective and efficient thing we must do. Remember the NIA caters for, you know, many other things. Your driver's license, your, you know, health... health My health, SNIT, uh, SNIT is captured in there. Everything else. Mm. So we save a lot of money. We are confident in the system. These are people who have not... All right, bothered to create a system that they can. If you govern a country for even four years and you cannot create an electoral system that you can trust, why should I follow you? What are these guys talking about? My brother, it's so, it's so, it's so, it's so difficult to understand mm. 
Mm. These guys who have governed this country for 28 good years. Do you know the 20, you know, 2020 budget? It is 65 billion cities. And about 65% of that is going into personal emoluments and servicing of debt. How much do we have left to govern this country? We must be thinking of growing this economy. And I'm not talking about what they are talking mm. about. Yeah. So we got it all wrong. So please, what PPP is saying is that you guys have been in charge of this system for 28 years. You received all the accolades. We clapped for you all over the continent. You projected Ghana as the beacon of democracy because elections you have been credible, you know, peaceful, and so on and so forth. Transitions. So why are you shaming us now? So, 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 so what compromise position right now would you recommend, seeing that uh, the big entrenched positions, both the Electoral Commission and those opposed to the compilation of the voters register, have made their positions very clear. The NDC is clear that it's going to resist. The EC is also clear it's going to go ahead. Where do we draw the line? How do we compromise? Well, first of all, we must find out from the NIA if within the limited time we have, they would be able to ensure that every Ghanaian gets their card that we can use on December 7. That is one. The EC and the, obviously, NPP is not involved in this fight. The EC and those who are, you know, engaged in the, you know, difficulties mm -hmm. must let cool heads prevail, yeah. sit down, go through the process, and make sure that we have a compromise. Thereafter, whoever comes to power 2021 must not take us through this unnecessary rugmaro again. Must invest in completing the, the people, NIA. And the, and the people of Ghana must insist. Those people who go every four years to give them the mandate, this is the result. This is the result. Where is the dividend of our democracy? So, the PPP insists that the NIA card is the best way to go. To if for some reason we are not there yet, we must talk, we must stop beating the war drums, we must let reason prevail, and remember that democracy is not about elections. Yeah. It's about getting appropriate mandate and applying the mandate for the development of the people and in our case the transformation of this country it's a shame that we are spending time on it this is uh, mr duopo we're grateful for your time thank you very much uh, thank you uh, mr william duopo is the vice chair of progressive people's party i'm stephen enti this is still midday live from our studios at at the Sawe kanda in accra now so other stories the coronavirus is ravaging the world and the need to have Critical interventions in social protection is key. The United Nations says the pandemic could turn back the clock of progress 30 years on global poverty. And this is alarming. As the country gets ready for election 2020, uh, it presents Ghanaians a greater opportunity to put many issues confronting the country's poor and vulnerable. The adverse effects of COVID-19 presents a Herculean challenge for the next uh, government. So how would political parties show a clear commitment on how they will deliver on some of the most critical aspects of social protection? How can political parties, for example, be pushed to address issues of citizens in their manifestos? We'll be getting onto uh, Skype right now to speak with George Oseakuto Bimpe, who is a country director of uh, Send Ghana, uh, to have some uh, conversations on this. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thank you extremely for your time. Good afternoon, sir, if you can hear me. All right, uh, so Ms. Akoto uh, Bimpe is the uh, country director of Sen Ghana. Uh, I, I want to find out from you. I mean, we, we have a few months to go to elections, and already we have these entrenched positions of electoral commission and those opposed to the compilation of the new voters register taking center stage of everything. How do we get away from that and begin to let the political parties tell us what they have for us in, in their manifestos? 
All right, I think uh, Ms. Akuto Bimpe is uh, not hearing us. Uh, we'll try to reconnect uh, with him to uh, find out if we can get a clear communications with him. This is still midday live. Now, the Electoral Commission on Wednesday fixed late June to compile a new voters register to pave way for the December 7 general elections. The commission intends to use 30 days to get 17 million Ghanaians onto a new electoral register. The news team has been speaking to some members of the public uh, to gauge their response to this announcement. The electoral commission has set June ending and July ending to compile a new voters register. But in this period of COVID-19, how do you intend protecting yourself from contracting the virus? It's like the normal uh, preventive uh, social measures, I guess. Um, wear my face mask and uh, keep uh, social distance. I was saying, I was I was was the crowd, I mean, join it. Messi is a main joining crowd. No, it's my crowd. Name your time because Mr. Bomb is me. Quite a man who's had no, but Mr. Bomb, who more than crowd, no pussy. I'm a small comedy because many of my is a marriage risky, but only say my prepare say hundred percent marriage register. And they are right, they have to provide security measures, they have to be around so that they will ensure that the social distancing is working to prevent the COVID 19 from spreading. It's a crowd announcing it. No more. I'll just distance myself because my health matters a lot. Yes. So I'll still go by the rules of the two meters apart. You wear your face masks and you do what you are told to do as you go there. So I believe if you all do the same, everything will be fine. That's why I said, Right, so let's also engage the Ghana Coalition of NGOs in Health. Uh, the National Chairperson, Dr. Gabriel Benaku, is joining us on Skype for, uh, to gauge the public health implications of the decision that the EC has taken. Uh, Dr. Benaku, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Hello, Doc, if you can hear me. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Good afternoon, if you can hear me. Good afternoon. Hello. Right. Uh, Dr. Gabriel Benaku is struggling again uh, with the sound, but uh, we'll see if we can hear us. Uh, Dr. Benaku, if you can hear me, I mean, I know that there have been questions over the public health implications of the decision by the Electoral Commission to go ahead, fix a date for compilation of a new voters register, June and July. I want to hear what the views of the Coalition of NGOs on Health are on this. Right. I think Dr. Gabriel Benaku cannot hear us and we apologize for the technical hitches there. This is still Midday Live from our studios at Adesawi Kanda in Accra. We'll take a break here and uh, we'll be right back with more news. Remember that TV3 is live on your DSTV channel 279. We're also streaming on Facebook and on 3news.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Midday Live, the business segment. Now, the World Bank is providing a total of 550 million U.S. dollars to Ghana in various forms to support, uh, tackle the, the fight against uh, COVID-19. The World Bank country director, Pierre Laporte, gave details of the additional funds in an interview on 3FM's morning show, Sunrise. World Bank, we, we are an institution with uh, every single country in the world being uh, a member. Mm -hmm. So we are accountable to our member countries. So we have tomorrow to satisfy our board of directors mm -hmm. that the debt relief that was given, I mean the same thing with the bilateral creditors, they have to satisfy their people, their governments, their parliaments, that the debt relief that we gave to Ghana was used as in we expected 
to health, to education, and not to areas where where they were not supposed to be. And and the, the G20, the bilaterals, has assigned the World Bank and the IMF the responsibility of doing this monitoring, and that's what we expect to do. And we've done it before, you know, like I said, the mm -hmm. initiative. Yes. And uh, I think we, you know, we do it. We can uh, work with uh, audit firms to do this thing. So. I'm mm. not. I'm not uh, personally worried that this this is an issue because we have to do it. Mm. We are accountable to our people, to our countries, and uh, we need to do that. So, in total, um, b um, by August, the World Bank would have given in total 550 million in new resources uh, for COVID. dollars in new resources for, for COVID. specifically for COVID yes. to Ghana. Yes, 550 million. Yes. Okay. Plus, plus, uh, that's new resources, and like mm. I said. There are resources that are currently there in other projects, but we are reorienting these resources to accelerate our support, especially to SMEs and to social protection uh, needs. And now uh, to other stories, the Security Council's for uh, second, the Takradi Metropolitan Assembly and the FIA Kwesimintim Municipal Assembly have closed down all major markets in the two assemblies for one week. The measure is to help contain the spread of COVID-19. My colleague Erika OJ is there and is bringing update from the Takradi Market Circle. Assembly. Right, so Eric J is uh, trying to get ready. We apologize for that disruption, but this is still midday live from our studios at Adisawe Kanda. The Security Councils for the Kandita Kradi Metropolitan Assembly and the Fia Kuzimintim Municipal Assembly have closed down all major markets in the two assemblies for one week. The measure is to help contain the spread of COVID-19. Uh, my colleague Eric Yawaje, who you saw earlier, is th there at the Market Circle, Takrati Market Circle area, is joining us uh, with a situational report of exactly uh, what's happening there. Let's see if we can get a clear uh, feed from him now. Right, um, we must apologize uh, for that delay. So we are currently here at the Takrade Market Circle. Takrade Market Circle is the most busiest trading spot here in the Western region. Now, as part of effort to combat the spread of the COVID-19, the two assemblies here, the Kosimintu Municipal Assembly and the Sekendi Takrade Metropolitan Assembly have gone ahead with their decision to close down all five major markets in these two assemblies. So if you go to Sekendi, the, ma the main market has been closed down. If you go to Kosimintu, the market also closed down if you go to Kojo Chrome and Secondi and if you come to the market circle all these markets have been closed down to ensure that they are able to contain the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Now we came here this morning at exactly 6 a.m. and we came to meet all the shops here closed and they, I can report that there's been a high level of compliance from the traders. Now you can see in a shot that all the shops the stores are all closed down. There are sections of the market that falls outside it. That is the outside perimeter of the top rider market circle. And these sections have been called enough to, as it were, prevent any form of trading activity. I can also report that we don't see a hawking going on because the two assemblies are deployed forces and they are around and they are ensuring that the traders comply with provision that they should stop trading. Now I have with me the Takade Submetro Director, Nana Asampana here, the second, for him to tell us what he's observed so far, even though it is early days yet. Good afternoon, welcome to Media Life. 
Good afternoon, Eric. Uh, so it's been like six hours you closed down the market. Um, what will you say has been the level of compliance? Well, I think that so far we have seen high level compliance in the city center. Most of the shops have closed. Um, people are not running as normal as it's supposed to be. Um, for some other activities, basically apart from trading, there are so many things that goes on in the city. Others are going to some supermarket, you have some private activity not necessarily related to uh, buying and selling. So that's how come we see some few people in this. But typically on a normal day, when you come to Takrade Market Circle, you can see that this place is so crowded, you drive in a, in a, in a traffic, go slow. But so far, I think that the city centre is virtually empty. Okay. So, so in the course of the one week, what is going to happen? Yeah, so, so during this one week, what the uh, Metropolitan Assembly, together with our sister assembly, the Fia Kwesimiti Municipal Assembly, intends doing is that um, we'll be disinfecting, fumigating again the, this market. Additionally, we intend to regulate the number of people who will be coming to the market each day. Therefore, we have uh, initiated a process to issue out cards colored cards, red, gold, green to the traders. So that's what we intend doing. We've had series of engagement with all the leadership in the various markets and in our case as the security council decided before then the market queens themselves had been met and they wrote to us that the assembly should go ahead with the closure of the market for at least one week. So uh, that's how come you can see so much compliance over here. Yeah, we, we, we've, gotten, we've been getting some reaction from the, some of the traders around and they're not too happy. According to them, if this decision was really thought through, they, you would have realized that the problem is not so much with those who are selling inside the market because if you go inside the market, all the health and safety protocols. They wash their hands, they use hand sanitizers, they are well demarcated, they are observing the social distancing. The challenge they see is persons who have come back from the makeshift market at the Jubilee Park here and they are trading. So even if you close down the market for one month and you are not able to deal with people who are selling at unauthorized places and the inner perimeter, we will still have this challenge. As an assembly, I don't think that we will sit there on consent to allow some of these things to go on. However, I tend to disagree with that observation that those people are making in the sense that the market queens themselves have come to us after we engage them that they can see that people are not complying both in and out the market. Therefore, within this one week period, as we come back, we will put every uh, arsenal on the ground to ensure that there's compliance because we want our lives, our normal lives back. Ghanaians, citizens or residents of Secondary Takwa, they want their normal lives back. So if we want it back, then it requires that some level of sacrifice. We have to suffer to gain, you understand? So uh, when we come back, of course, we ensure that inside the market, there is social distancing, outside the same. Jubilee Park, as you mentioned, has been closed as of now. And the same way we introduced the card arrangement there, we will not allow everybody. We started, it was so nice, even to the extent that the President of the Republic praised the Metropolitan Assembly for a good work done. So we ensure that the success story is maintained. Before we came on, uh, you were telling me that this one week is subject to a review. So it means that after one week and you are not happy with what you see, you extend it? Yeah, basically what it means is that um, during the one week, there are some activities that the Assembly will be doing. We are hopeful that within the one-week period we'll be able to finish. If for any reason we are not able to finish, we would have to send a message and through your media platforms, we will let the general public know that there's an extension. Of course, um, it also depends on the level of compliance of the trail. As of now, we are expecting the leadership to provide us with some information which will inform the card, the production of the cards. So, um, as of now, we have secured about 60 to 70 percent of the data that we want. So, the earliest time that we get all the information we want, that is when we'll be able to finish the work that we are supposed to do. How about the satellite market? What is going to happen? So, what's happening currently is that we don't want this closure to affect the general public so much. Therefore, um, the satellite markets are operating. 
smaller smaller market in the communities are operating. You can go there and buy your basic food items and other things that you need to be able to lead your normal life. Thank you very much. So that was the uh, Takrade Submetro Director Nana Asampe and the second. Um, giving us an update with regards to what he has seen and what is going to happen uh, for the next one week while the markets has been closed. Eric here with JTV3 News, Takrade Market Circle. And that's how we wrap up with the business. I'm Stephen N.T. Up next is sports. Well, good afternoon. It's time to do sports here on Media Live on TV3. My name is Yao Ofusula with our first story. And Kumasiya Santikotoko, largely known in many quarters as the biggest club in the country, have been in the news for the past few weeks for issues regarding management of the club and a complete failure of working systems there. Now, to make sense of how difficult it is to manage a Santikotoko, we turn to presidents of the Sports Rights Association of Ghana, Kabna Yaboa, and former chairman, Herbert Mensah. Say Asante Kotoko, a club after the heart of many and one of football's biggest things. It has been 85 years since the very foundations of what is today a successful club story was birthed. In the last eight and a half decades, it has evolved into a temple worshipped by many. Despite the visible signs of growth across a spectator front that has remained religious, it has equally recorded so much drama in the boardroom, such as the choice of who gets to run the club at various tiers and layers. The Kotoko job is a tough one. It requires a skill set of its own and speaks different languages that should always start and end at achieving results. From Phil Sims Kofi Mensah through to the iconic Herbert Mensa to present day Dr. Kwame Che, there has been enough leadership spectacle to feed the curiosity of just how complex it is to manage Kumasi Asante Kotoko. It's quite interesting. Uh, I think the first time I had the privilege of uh, being closely associated with Kotoko, that would be um, around 1976. And uh, those were the days of uh, FD in Siena. He struggled a bit. Those were the days of the fearsome fivesome. And Kodogo were always humiliated by Glorious Atobok. Um, he played his part, but after him came um, Sims Kofi Mensah, who really changed the face of uh, Santi Kotoko and uh, brought in quite a number of extraordinary players. Uh, those were the periods he brought the likes of Joseph Ka, uh, Haruna Yusi. Uh, the likes of Popokunti, Francis Kumi, Alberta Sase, uh, Karim Zito, Charles Opong. And um, it was a kind of renaissance because it was the first time Kodoko started beating Hearts of Oak. And I remember that fateful Wednesday at the Crossport Stadium when Kotoko annihilated the Hearts of Oak by three goals and all. Indeed, Popokunti scored a fourth goal, which was disallowed. And it was quite strange because. Uh, uh, it was a corner kick, so it's, it beats the imagination of many people how that goal was disallowed. And so they dominated, Sims Mensah was absolutely incredible. I, th I thought we, we, we could have started having a lot of management issues until Herbert Mensah bounced on the scene and did a wonderful job. For persons taking over the club, the guiding principle is to absorb and embrace all the strands it offers, its people and its culture. Most importantly, homage and respect must be at all times paid to Otunfo Nana Osei Tutu II. Herbert Mensah ran the club from 1999 to 2002, he explains. I've made it a point in the last years to leave the incumbents alone. I've tried, it's only been on one occasion, two occasions, with uh, two particular uh, chief executives, one who I believe was taking the club into complete financial distress. Uh, I will not mention his name, but it's a matter of public record and I had to publicly deal with him. And the second one was um, was when uh, KK Sapan was chairman and it was seen that he was taking on Otunfo. And I had to get up on radio and just advise my elder KK that Yourself and Otunfo are not the same level. Check yourself. If it's your advisors, if it's your people, check yourselves. Also, on Asante Kotoko, and former player at the club, Eric Bequin, says the current management can only work well if the club decides to chart one course and believe in each other.
It's, it's, it's all about, there's no that oneness again. There's been a division whereby uh, when a certain quarter management is in power, there's a certain circle that will be fighting against the management. And at the end of the day, no one is going to use his left hand to point his father's house. So no matter the grievances, no matter the misunderstanding, we should know that Kotoko is paramount. Kotoko should be our first priority that we need to worship, we need to cherish. But if we don't do it that way, and then every circle is going to support a certain uh, management or bring an agenda of supporting a certain management, it will kill the team and Kotoko will lose. That's Eric Bakwe there, bringing us to the end of the sports news this afternoon here on Midday Live on TV3. Welcome back. Now, the fast-rising Danzol star Batero has saluted the effort of frontline workers who risk their health to safeguard lives in the fight against COVID-19, performing at an online concert dubbed the Pandemic Virtual Concert. The new town-based artists who urged fans to wear face masks, uh, practice social distancing, and avoid non-essential visits. If you to just sneeze, coronavirus, all are on your knees. Heal the heart, set me free, coronavirus. What a deadly disease. Hey, coronavirus, all are on your knees. Heal the heart. Watch out. The world is facing pandemic. The rich and the poor now we all panic. As Ghana adjusts to new reality of life in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, a number of musicians are taking their shows online to share some musical joy with fans. Dancehall sensation Bastero, born Basit Ibrahim, has joined the list of musicians from across the globe to stage a virtual concert to educate and bond with fans. The streamed concert saw Bastero inspire hope and treat his virtual audience to his irresistible list of hit songs. Intermittently, the frenemies composer pep talked fans, urging them to keep safe, wear face masks, and practice social distancing to help break the chain of the spread. this calamity. Oh Lord, you got the power, you are the mighty. Forgive we sins and the rising star also saluted the efforts of frontline workers who risk their health to safeguard lives in the fight against coronavirus. Make you stay out, make sure you keep washing your hands under running water with soap, and then make sure you use your sanitizer and everything. And I mean, I'm also doing the same. All my guardians, no need to worry. Right, so that's a very interesting way to wrap up the bulletin. Thanks very much for staying with us on behalf of the crew here. Good afternoon. You can find more news at 3news.com.